Hey, hey, party people. Today, we're going to test the light fastness of a bunch of different ink brands. If you watch my 2017 Japan art haul, I went and bought a bunch of different inks. I had previously have uh, only some experience with the Higgins brand and I mean I know how to paint with them and I taught them they're not my favorite they're not the ones I have the most experience with uh, in terms of watercolors I am 17,000 percent more proficient with gouache and even tube watercolor I really don't like pan watercolor so I don't really use them inks are nice Maybe during this whole experiment process, I will fall in love with them. I'm, I'm currently in like with them. I like them. I don't love them. Maybe I will learn to love them. In the comment section of my Japan haul, someone had suggested, hey, I heard Ecoline is not very light fast. How about you do a light fast test? And I was like, hey, that sounds like a really good idea. So let's do that. I'm in the habit of shaking anything that's liquid before I use anything. I mean, unless it's like soda pop. <laughs> yeah, I got, you know, CMYK, Cyan, Magenta, Yellow, Black, or the closest I could get of all the brands that I bought in Japan. But of all the brands that I have here, I have a red, violet, I have yellow, I have black, but I only have a blue. And the reason why is when I first started using inks, it was part of the original curriculum of the class that I was asked to teach to take over. And uh, they had a supplies list and I followed their supplies list and I just kept teaching off their supplies list. And I made some changes, but I didn't make changes to the colors. So I don't have anything that's closer to cyan. I don't even know if Higgins has anything closer to a cyan, but whatever, this is just a light fast test. So the thing that I've noticed about inks is number one, they stain so much fun. <laughs> they stain and they especially stain plastic palettes. So I've switched to this porcelain palette, which I adore, but is crazy expensive. So my recommendation to you is one of two. One, either use plastic palettes and wash them out real quick once you're done working, or get a cheap dinner plate. You can get a nice, sturdy, real thick, sturdy dinner plate at a thrift store for a dollar. And those make for great palettes. You're not going to get all the divots and all the pretty and all that from a palette like this one, but it'll do in a pinch. The thing I didn't like about my experience with ink so far is, you know, the color intensity, the opacity. Okay. So I wet my brush. I squeezed all the water out, but you see... This is black with as little water added as possible, and it dies down to such a light black, which is, you know, not my favorite thing. And, you know, since I am someone who is big on color matching specific fabrics, you know, if I can't get the exact color, in a medium range, then I don't like that so much, you know? Instead of cyan, I have the blue here. You know, Higgins, they don't have fancy names. It's this color's just called blue. I am using a sheet of Arches Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. Not trying to make anything super beautiful here. Just a color chart. This one is called yellow. This one is called red violet. I was talking about some of the pricing of the different inks on my in my Japan haul video. And I mean, some people 
they're like, well, you know, you have to take into consideration how much ink you get in a bottle. So, yeah, if we're going by price, dollar, yen, by, you know, volume, this is 20 milliliters, the Windsor and Newton, they were the, they were the cheapest, but they were also the smallest at 14 milliliters. And then the Holbein, they were only a little bit more expensive, but they were 30 milliliters. And I get that. I get where you're trying to figure out the value. But for me, it's like, look, do they work good? Because it's not like, oh, you know, I'm only going to buy 15 milliliters. I mean, you're not going to get asked for half a bottle. Like, this is the, this is the price. They call this color, do you see a name? Uh, it's the closest to cyan as I could find. Is that a color number, 578? I guess it is, because this one is C700. That's the black. And their magenta is 337. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that those are the color numbers. Their yellow is 205, okay. So their cyan is 578. Dang, I hope this stuff is life fast because this color will punch you in the face. Woo! Hello. What's up? This yellow is kind of weak. Nice. This is more of a true magenta. Okay. The Higgins ones is red. The Higgins red violet is a little bit more blue. This is more of a true magenta, I think. Tiny bit warmer. Okay. Ooh, those colors is nice. And so far, they're less streaky than the Higgins. Oh my God, don't tell me I'm going to fall in love with inks because I've been using the wrong brand the whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> that would so be me. And then I would start an inks obsession. Oh my God. You guys, like, you already know I have a problem with art supplies. It's not like I need to fall in love with more stuff. I mean, let's be real here. Do I need to fall in love with more stuff? Next, we have the Windsor and Newton. These little ink walls are so cute. Look at that. Boink. Boink. Um, excuse me, how am I supposed to get this ink out? Am I supposed to just have a clean dropper on hand for all these colors? Are you kidding? Shut up right now with how annoying that is. Okay, that's super annoying. We're just gonna make do today and I guess I have to freaking get some droppers or something to work with these. Ugh. And see, this is why I can't just say like, oh, you know, I love this brand of other stuff, so I'm sure it's, it's going to be the whole brand is awesome. You can't really do that with anything. You can't do that with cosmetics. You can't do that with paints. Just, ugh, whatever. This ink better be the most amazing, most light fast, incredible, juicy, sing heaven, praise, all the art gods in the world sort of ink to make up for how annoying that is. Give me a break. Now I'm feeling like these are way expensive because they don't even come with a dropper. Mm. Ooh, ooh, streaky. Hi, Streaky. My name is Zoe. I don't like you right now. All right. Let's see how you dry. I am going to use brand new water, clean brush that I have not used today, and squeeze all the water out. Carefully dip into this yellow. This is their canary yellow. I don't know how many yellows they have, but this is their canary yellow which is much warmer than the Ecoline yellow. 
And see, this is why I don't really like artificial bristle brushes because I have to dip so many times to get a lot of liquid into the brush. It doesn't hold as much liquid in one go as the real uh, the real bristles do. This is a nice color. This is the Scarlet. Whoa, what the? Oh, this color is weird. It's like neon red or something. Whoa. That's like, is the camera picking up on how fluorescent that is? Dang. I used to yell at my students in class all the time. It's like, close your lids in between painting. It's like the last thing we need is for this to get everywhere. <laughs> sure enough, God, you know, like, of course everyone likes being right, right? It's fun. It's totally fun. But not when it's one of these situations where you're right, and that means a student has not screwed the lid back on and just spilled ink everywhere. Like the really dark blue one. It was not a fun day for anyone. Not for the person who did it, not for her neighbors who had to have some blue things. This is cobalt. The labeling had it looking a bit more cyan than blue, but what are you gonna do? Do, 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 do. And then here we have our Holbeins, the ones I've been most excited to try out because their packaging is so pretty. And also they are a brand I've tried before and enjoyed. They do good gouache. I mean, I've heard many watercolor artists sing Holbein's praises. I've never tried their, their tube watercolors. And so I can't say anything, but I've heard people sing their praises. Look at these things, they're so pretty. And you get so much. Man, these eyedroppers are really powerful. Whew. Be gentle, y'all, be gentle. And this one has a little thing that says it's waterproof and opaque. Do the other ones say waterproof? Oh yeah. These say waterproof and transparent. These say waterproof. This one, the black, says waterproof and opaque. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Again, squeeze out as much of the water as possible. Soak up my brush with that cyan. Well, it's called, they call it turquoise. And this is closer to cyan than any of the others. But you know, they have a really good color labeling. And so that might be it. I didn't squeeze enough into the... I don't know what's happening here. Like this paper is just soaking up that whole by an ink like it's hungry. And I really did not. I'm doing it just like I did the others, you know, squeezing out as much water before I lay down the, before I try to soak up the, the color. Hmm. Don't love that. Let me just preemptively squeeze a bit more of the black. So maybe they give you 30 milliliters because they know that their product likes paper and loves to just get all up in paper's DNA. Of course, now that I have added more ink to my palette, I don't need it. <coughs> Do I need more? I'm gonna add more. I'm, it's very annoying to me. Okay, and then the yellow. The yellow works nice. I don't know what the turquoise's problem was. 
Okay, their yellow is very orangey. This one is just called straight up yellow, but more golden orange than the others. And then their carmine, which is the closest that I could see to their magenta. Woo! Look at that color. And that'll kick you in the face. Hi, Carmine. What's up? What's up? What's up? Whew. What is going on, sexy lady? Woo. Okay, that is not the best magenta. I would say that is the better magenta, but that'll kick you in the face. Woo. As you know, or some of you know, if you watch my studio tour and stuff, uh, I live in a place with lots of windows. I'm going to tape this to a window and leave it up for a while. And then I'm going to uh, shoot the results. Oh, you know what else I want to do? So once upon a time, and I forget when, I have a, like 150 videos up. I really don't know when and where this happened. But someone recommended Noodlers Inc. to me, saying they were the end-all, be-all. So they're a bit on the pricey side. They're like $10 a bottle, but you get like so much ink, right? And people sing this brand's praises. And this was a while ago. This was several months ago. And I forgot until now that I had this. So I bought a bottle of their black. The only eternal, look at this. The only eternal black ink. Bulletproof on cellulose paper, yet washes off plastic with water. Water-based ink, made in USA, always pH neutral. Okay. So I want to try this. I got this little sampler in one of those um, sketch box things. So I'm gonna use, I have not used any of these. As you can see, they're I'm ripping a brand new one. And I want to... Oh, test the light pack. This one also does not requires a dropper. <sighs> I did not know that this was a thing to work with inks, that you would need to buy droppers. So I guess that is what I'm going to be needing to do in order to continue with my ink playing spree is to invest in some droppers. Okay, so I'm just going to soak up my brush as much as I can and whew, that is black that is black 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 y'all super black if you watch my black illustrating black textures video we had markers that were labeled super black special black uh, did we have an extra black we had a jet black 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 Here's a single ply. There's a double ply. All right. Once this all dries, I'm going to cover half of all of these. And then I'm going to tape them to my window, leave it alone for a while. And then I'm going to shoot Oops, the second half. And uh, let's talk about the results. All right. See you soon. Hey, hey, party people. All right. So I pinned this to a cork board. I had this sitting just like straight up in my window, undisturbed for a full week. I live in a very sunny corner of the world and it was blasting sunshine, you know, uh, late April, 2017 for a straight week. So let's see how these inks fared. Let's start with this one. <laughs> okay. This is the noodlers. Y'all, do you see a difference? Because if it faded in the sun, then there should be a sharp line, right? Where. No. 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 Maybe I'll put this back on the board and test it for another week. Maybe I will. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's start with the Higgins. Jun ja da dun, jun ja da dun. Oh, okay. So yeah, not life fast at all. 
there's the black and you could see oops, there's the black and you could see that sharp line where it faded and I mean honestly it's not even that great of a black it's a really soft black so mm, look at that it turns purple in the sun like see how crazy blue that is and how faded and purplish it looks now in the sun here's yellow I mean the fading is less evident but I mean it's yellow because it's light I mean everything is going to be less evident to be honest and then here that is a lot of fading let's try the eco line this is the one that got it all started because the viewer who suggested the light fastness test was primarily concerned with this brand. So with the black, there really isn't a big difference or any difference that I can see. Okay, the black holds steady. Uh, the blue got darker. It's like the opposite of like fast, <laughs> the opposite of fading. No, no, no. This, this was the side that was covered by the paper. Okay. It was always the right hand side, but it got darker. This one got more purple. This one got darker. Mm, okay. And then the yellow, I mean, I don't see any difference at all. There's that. And then the magenta. Don't really see much of a difference there either. Windsor and Newton. The one I was annoyed with because it didn't have little droppers. The noodlers didn't either. I did buy droppers so I could play with them. Dun, 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 dun. Holy crap. All right. So the black, it stayed fairly consistent, but it's not a great black to begin with. Like it's a little bit better than the Higgins black, but it's not as great as the Eco line. And much like the Higgins, the blue turned purple. And the yellow, <clears throat> again, not as obvious, but can you see that there is a difference? Like there is a line there. There is a definite uh, value difference in the yellows. And wow, okay, that didn't hold up too much of anything. This is the worst out of the bunch. Oh my goodness. All right, this is the whole buying. This is the one with the pretty packaging. All right, so let's look at this black. Is there any difference in the black? No, the black held up real nice. Boop, 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 boop. The blue, do you see how it is a little bit more turquoise on this side? than this side. I don't know if the camera really picks that up. Can you see that? Okay. But at the same time, I was struggling with it when I was originally painting it, and I have these little thingies in it, so I feel like I wanna do another test on this paint by itself. And then the yellow, Wow, faded a lot. It faded the most out of all the yellows. And the magenta, it faded quite a bit. Not as bad as the Windsor Newton. Still faded. What did we learn today, y'all? We learned that uh, don't set your ink drawings out in the sun. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I um, also give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment if you want me to continue in the comparing ink brands 
uh, testing series. I'm going to keep testing some of this stuff. Da 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 Mostly I want to see if these black inks continue to be as light fast as they are. That would be pretty dope if they were. Let's put these back up here. All right. I'm going to do another swatch of the Holbein turquoise blue. I'm going to use a little bit of this new paper I got. Uh, Pepel watercolor heavyweight paper for wet media, 300 GSM. Um, let's just cut a little piece here. Wow, that's really straight and perfect. Good job, Zoe. <coughs> I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna pin it to the board. I'm gonna ta uh, tape up half, and I'm going to put it back in the same sunny spot, and uh, we will revisit in another week. Hey, hey, party people, I'm back. Passage of time being, look at that. My fingernails are almost clear of the indigo dye. And we are back with our swatches. It's been five days since uh, the last unveiling, and I feel like that's enough time for what we need to see, right? All right, so let's start with this. Um, remember we did this turquoise swatch and I didn't like how I had originally painted it, so I wanted to test it again. So I tested it again. God. I got a little extra with that tape there. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So after five days, can you guys see how much? So this was the part that was covered. That's how much it faded. And it got bluer. You see how this side is a little bit more yellow? And the noodlers. Oh, dang. All right. So, again, I cannot see any fading. Amaze balls. Okay, so this has been up there for almost two weeks. Now I want to go get more noodlers inks and see how light fast those things are. And the Higgins, let's see here. Yes, it continued. It faded, but it was already kind of faded to begin with. The blue, yes, it kept fading. And it just keeps getting purpler the more it fades. The yellow, definitely some fading going on. It's like, you know, everything is less drastic on the yellow just because it's all like started off so light and then here yes it keeps fading it'll just keep fading and fading and fading burr, burr, burr. pickle line that black is still holding pretty steady Whoo! this one is the opposite of fading as it gets darker and darker it kind of stops at a certain point in getting darker, but look at that big jump there. Ooh. And then the yellow. I mean, this is also the lightest yellow, but at the same time, it's even less. I mean, I can't see any fading. I can, you know, see some fading here. I can even see some fading here, but not here. And then this one, like I can see a little bit of fading here. But really, I can't see those lines of demarcation like I can here or even here. Whew. That's pretty nice, yo. All right. Windsor and Newton. The black. Mm, there's some fading. And then this one, kind of like the Higgins, it gets, it fades a lot and it gets way purple. I mean, it was already kind of not a great, powerful color. At least the Higgins started off strong. So if you were really good about keeping it in the dark, you could keep this beautiful hue. But dang, it hella faded. That's right, I said hella. And then the yellow. 
don't know if the camera can pick this up. I have all my lights on, but can you see that there is a little bit of fade there? And then the, the scarlet, I mean, that's just terrible. I mean, this one performed the worst out of the whole batch. Oh my God. Ah, da -dong, dong, dong. All right. And then here's the whole bind. That's just a smudge. So again, that black is holding steady, looking nice. And I mean, now even on this one, you can see some of the fading, but I still prefer to refer to the other one I did. And then the yellow, you can see the three distinct values of yellow. And you can see the fade. The fading is not as bad. Nothing is as bad as this. Oh, my God. Or even as bad as the Higgins. But there is some fading. So, boys and girls and non-binary gender conforming individuals, what have we learned today? We have learned that uh, hardly any of these are really light fast. So, don't hang your ink paintings and drawings in the hot California sunshine for hours and hours and days and days on end. Lesson number two, you can't just buy off of light fastness because apparently all of these fade a little bit. And so you need to also judge based on how well they perform when you're actually painting with them. And go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Drop me a comment if you are interested in more ink experiments. This is kind of fun because it's, you know, it's not like me showing you a bunch of things. It's like I don't have that much experience with inks, but I want to learn more. And so it's a little bit like we're experimenting together. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, share with your friends who are into ink so that you guys can make more informed ink buying decisions. As usual, it's all about practicing. And I'm going to be practicing a lot with these inks moving forward. I'm kind of stoked. Maybe I'll actually participate in Inktober this year. And uh, I will see you in the next video.